often preach on the Psalms. Most of the time when I'm going to preach, I look at the lectionary. Now, many of you know that the lectionary has a three-year cycle, years A, B, and C. And each Sunday has four passages from the Bible to select from. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have, that I tend to preach from the New Testament. I'm not sure why, but looking at this today, and as I was working on this sermon and working on the last couple of weeks, um, orders of worship made me think of that. And I think one of the difficulties of preaching from the Psalms is that there's so many things in each one. You know, sometimes each verse will bring a different topic. But in the New Testament, it seems that I'm usually preaching a narrative passage that's more likely to have one focus. This week I'm preaching on Psalm 62. Last week I preached on Psalm 139. And I thought that 139 fit very well with the speech of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that I read for you as well. Psalm 139 is titled The Inescapable God in the NRSV Bible that I used. It tells us that God knows us and knows what we are doing and saying before we even do it or say it. It encourages us and lets us know that we are wonderfully made, each and every one of us. Now, Psalm 62 is titled, Song of Trust in God Alone. I see this psalm as a psalm of hope. Indeed, the first line says, for God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. Now, you may well say that that was easy to say this is about hope when the first line contains <laughs> and says that hope is from God. But I think this goes, just be, goes beyond just hope. It speaks to me of, as another of those passages that tells us to trust God, but also to trust ourselves. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. Dr. King, in the speech I read last week to you, says, I have a dream many, many times. Don't we all have dreams? We dream of a God that we trust. But more importantly, we also need to trust ourselves. God forms us and he knows us even before we know ourselves. We need to trust ourselves because God trusts us. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. I love that imagery of not being shaken. Aren't there those times in our lives when our cage gets a little rattled, when we get our panties in a bunch and we are shaken? Do you ever feel that way? That everything nailed down is coming loose? Did you ever feel that a seismic event has shaken your world beyond recognition? The Bible provides hope for us in just such times as these. For the Bible often speaks to people that are facing cataclysmic events. Biblical writers were fascinated by earthquakes and referred to them often to make their point. An earthquake is a good image for cataclysmic times when everything nailed down is coming loose. Earthquakes, shake, earthquakes threaten our assumptions about the stability of life. We like to think of the earth as, a, as, a, as rock solid, but sometimes the earth moves. Sometimes when people fear flying on a plane, they resort to the ancient Latin and say, just get me back to terra firma. We expect the ground to be firm. We want our buildings tied to the bedrock because our foundations need to tie to something that won't move. We are easily lured into thinking the same about our lives. We expect stability. We expect our lives to be rock solid. But then something traumatic happens and everything nailed down is coming loose. I remember years ago when I lived in Phoenix, I was at the gym. I had just got on an elliptical or a treadmill, I don't remember which, and I was watching the World Series. Then everything on the TV screen shook and then it went black. We didn't know what was happening. It was later 
that I found out that there was a huge earthquake in San Francisco. Much of the city was damaged and some of the freeways were never rebuilt. It was indeed a time when the people of the Bay Area experienced everything nailed down was coming loose. Years later, when I moved to California, I always had trouble with the Bay Bridge. You see, when you travel out of San Francisco, you travel on the bottom level of the bridge. That same bridge that had partially collapsed during that earthquake. Did you know that you can hold your breath for a couple of minutes? That you can hold the steering wheel so tight that your fingers hurt? That's fear. I guess I needed to be more in touch, more willing to trust God always, even when driving on that bridge that could, in my mind, at any time, fall down on me. And I always prayed as I drove quickly, probably somewhat recklessly on that bridge, God, just let me get across this bridge. You see, I'm afraid of heights somewhat, so being on that bridge just raised my anxiety way beyond my comfort level. And in my mind, I could always see those images from the news reports of that earthquake, of that damaged bridge. But the bridge was an hour shorter than taking the long way home. What do you do when everything nailed down is coming loose? Isaiah tells us, lift up your eyes to heavens and look on the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And those who dwell therein shall die in the same way. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. And in another place, Isaiah says, For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my loving kindness shall, depart, shall not depart from you, neither shall my covenant of peace be removed, says Yahweh, who has mercy on you. When everything nailed down is coming loose, we find our hope and our comfort in God. As the psalmist said, he alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I will not be shaken. Another text, another phrase from this text from verse 8. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I realize that at times my first instinct might not be to trust God. Being a human with an analytical mind and thinking, I want an answer, a logical answer. That doesn't always happen. But having hope and faith and trust in God, for me, comes in time. I wish I was one of those people whose first go-to place was with God. I'm working on that. The Bible often talks about the importance of confession and talking to God. There are those times when we need to pour out our hearts to God because God is big enough to hear and accept whatever we have to say. When we pour out our hearts, we will find refuge. And as I said, read last week, the psalmist said to us, God knows everything before we do knows what we're going to say. Growing up Catholic, I spent a lot of Saturday evenings in confession. Confession of sins is private in the Catholic Church. In our church, we publicly share our confession and our assurance of pardon. It's an important part of our being together to share with each other and with God, not only our confession, our sins, but our assurance of pardon for each other. I was working on this sermon as I watched the inauguration of the 46th president of the United States. I don't know when I cried as much as I did that day. To me, that was so hopeful. When I think of the last few months, let's say since about last February, I think we have all had our lives shaken. Many will say the last four years have been earth-shaking. As we look to our future, I think one thing that maybe we have not done in our recent past is to trust in him, to trust in God at all times. Yes, God is a refuge for us, 
But the last months have made this so hard for so many. The pandemic, the uncertainty of our lives, the political climate, all of these affecting our lives. And you can add to my short list, your own concerns. And unfortunately, I'm pretty sure there are many. I think that for many of us, we've had a hard time putting our trust in God, especially when we think about always putting our trust there. During the last few years, there have been many times that so many of us have despaired. And we continue to despair. We can remember, however, that when we place our faith and trust in God, God listens. As the psalm told us last week, God knows us, maybe even better than we know ourselves. I think that for me, the last four years have been hard because I have feared, not just for myself, but so for so many in our country and around the world, for the dreamers, for the black and brown people, for women, for men, for the environment, for the world, and of course, for each and every one of us. The last four years have been hard. And I'm sure that for many of you, they have been hard as well. And some of you will say at the end of the next four years that it's been hard as well. And even though the last four years have been hard, perhaps I should have remembered and perhaps some of you can remember, but this is not the first time in history that our country has stumbled. It's not the first time that we've had enemies within our own country. We went through a civil war and we healed as a country after that war. During the inauguration, I heard that President Lincoln took his oath of office in front of a Capitol building without a dome. And that during his presidency, he continued to funny, funnel money to finish that dome. And he was criticized about that. But when criticized about the use of the money, he said that as long as the people saw the dome being built, moving forward on the work, people of our country can have hope. Well, I think I forgot that, that we can have hope, that we must have hope that I must have hope that what is today can change tomorrow. Have you ever been staggering at your wits end when the storms of life are tossing you back and forth? What do you do? We cry to the Lord in our trouble and God brings us to a place of refuge. At times, I've lost sight of the God who hears me, who comforts me, and who will give me refuge. As I say, and maybe I didn't listen to myself, God does hear our prayers, and he answers our prayers. As Psalm 139 tells us, God discerns my thoughts even from far away. She is acquainted with all of my ways. It is up to us to acquaint ourselves with our ways. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. It's hard to always feel that way. I usually do, but I'm human. So I have to be reminded from time to time. And while I may not preach on the Psalms a lot, I do find solace and comfort and strength from them. I read them a lot. And yes, refuge from my shaky life, where it sometimes seems everything nailed down is coming loose. That's the time when I find comfort in the Lord. If you look up refuge in the dic dictionary, you will find it means a shelter or protection from danger or difficulty. The Psalms are filled with words of encouragement for us. Listen to these verses. 
my soul wait in silence for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. And trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Indeed, God is a refuge for us. God knows us. God comforts us. Well, sometimes we have difficulty seeing that. Remember that. God is a refuge for all of us. Amen. <clears throat>